Good evening, guys. Happy Tuesday. How are you? Hi, Jose. Hi, Mauricio. Hi, Emerson. How are you doing today? Hi, Miss. Good evening. Hi. <laughs> How are you? How Very was your well. Tuesday? So far, so good. That's really nice. It didn't rain today, but that I I guess that could be seen as positive, right? What about you, Jose? How are you? Maybe so so miss. By morning I was busy morning. Uh, I was yes, but in the afternoon I have enough time to went out. Oh, <laughs> Yes. It usually it sometimes it happens. 50-50. <laughs> Honestly before everything. <laughs> yeah. And all right. Mauricio, how are you? Mauricio, you are in mute. I'm fine, teacher. Thank you. <laughs> Doing great. Happy to see you. How was your day? Uh very busy. Oh, the same as Jose. <laughs> because uh, because uh, uh, the September 16th. Uh -huh. Oh, because of the holiday on yeah, Friday. Yeah. Oh, you guys are going to have off. <laughs> are you going to get vacation that day, Mauricio? Yes, of course. Oh, that's really nice. I don't get vacation from El Salvador, but that's I'm happy for the people that get them. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Hi, Carlita. How are you? Hi, Nelly. How are you? Hi, Hi Carla. Nelly. Good evening, Carla. Carlos. Hi, Nelly. All right, guys. Hi. So, listen. For tonight, we're going to start with the Kahoot review, right? With the review using Kahoot. I'm going to share the screen so you can log in, right? Give me one moment. I'm going to stop right here. I'm going to do it one more time. Bear with me. I want to see if I can use another template. <laughs> Just a moment. Okay, yeah. Now I'm going to share again. There you go. Okay. So remember, you can just scan the QR code with your cell phone and enter the pin code and then enter your name. Or you can use the link, right? The W Kahoot that kahoot that i see and then enter the pick and then enter your name you have it in the chat Okay, we have one person in, we have Carlita, Jose Romero. We're going to give a few moments for everyone to log into, into the game. Remember, you can just go to the link, www.kahoot.it, enter the pin game, and then enter your name. Or you can scan the, the QR code and it will take you to this page. Enter the pin and then enter your name. Okay, we're waiting for everyone to log into the game. Okay, 
Okay, we're waiting. We have eight people connected, so we want at least six people in the game. Okay. And Okay. We're waiting for one more person. We're just giving a few more minutes for everyone to finish connecting. For the ones that are connecting right now, that you can enter to the Kahoot game by using the link or the QR code and entering the pin and entering your name. Okay, for the ones that are coming in right now, go log into the game, please. Go to www.kahoot, enter the pin, and enter your name to participate. Or you can scan the, the QR code, enter the pin, and enter your name to participate. Okay, the ones that are just connecting, we're waiting for you to go into the game. We need one more person to connect to the game. All right, if not, we're gonna start. Then we're gonna begin with the game, right? Or with me. We got seven people already. Let's begin. Okay, this is an intermediary entity in the distribution channel that buys in bulk and sells to retailers. This entity buys in bulk and sells to the retailer. I just want to wait for the music to stop. Okay. <laughs> The correct answer was the wholesalers. They are the intermediary entity in the distribution channel that buys in bulk, right? They, but they buy big quantities and they sell them to the little, to the small resellers, right? So that they can profit from that. That's the wholesaler, okay? Let's see what happened Juan Carlos at the beginning and Jose Romero in second place and Carlita on the third place. How is she going? For the fourth. Okay, let's go with question number two. An individual agency or company that sells a manufacturer's product to wholesale and retail customers.
Okay. I'm missing one more answer. Yes, you got it. This is the distributor, right? They sell and manufacture mm -hmm. products to the wholesale and to the retail. So they distribute. Exactly, right? Very good. It's one person said retailer. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Let's see. We have Carla in the first place and then Juan Carlos on second and Jose on the third. Emerson going for the fourth and Mari is going to face the fifth, right? Maintaining position. Let's go with question number three. Simple past affirmative. Select the correct structure. Simple past affirmative. Select the correct structure. Okay, so we have four, two, and one divided answers. <laughs> Let's explain why and why not. Okay, number, well, let um, yellow, color blue. Color blue cannot be, oh, who's Wendy Marisela? No, Wendy. Okay, <laughs> we are already work, recording. Okay, so I was telling you guys that the blue one is incorrect because the structure is for affirmative, okay? Affirmative sentences try to make one. I went to the office this morning. She played with her friend. We ate lunch, right? I slept all night. So my only structure for simple past affirmative is the subject, and you go directly to the verb in past, okay? In affirmative version. You don't use auxiliary, and you don't use this auxiliary. This auxiliary is do is for present, but you cannot mix it in this case, right? So that's incorrect. So the only possible answer was subject plus the verb in past for affirmative. Okay? So we have Juan Carlos going from the third place back to the first one, Carlita on second, Emerson keeping the third, was the fourth, and Mauricio on the fifth. Let's go then, number four. This is for simple past negative. You're going to select the correct structure for simple past negative. Four, three, two, one, zero. Yay, we all got it. Yes, correct. <laughs> now you remember. We don't use auxiliaries for affirmative sentence, but definitely we do use auxiliaries for negative, right? So my structure would be subject, did not, or the short version, didn't, and the verb and infinitive. And the cool part is that it's the same auxiliary for all the subjects. You don't have to change it depending on the subject, right? I didn't study, you didn't study, we didn't study. So it doesn't change with this subject, right? So very good. Let's get to the scoreboard. 
And that's how we're looking. We're going to go with question number five. And this is a network created amongst different companies producing and distributing products. We only have three answers. Where are the answers? divided opinions here okay the correct one was supply chain okay it cannot be logistics and it cannot be procurement because this is a network that's created amongst different companies right so that would be a supply chain all right and carlita going going back from low to the first place going and juan carlos remaining in the first place let's go with question number six the ongoing process of moving parts and products into and out of a company's location. The ongoing process of moving parts and products into and out of a company's location. We only have four answers. Okay, <laughs> divided answers again. The correct answer is the inventory, okay? Not procurement and not distribution, this is inventory, right? And now we're going to see the score. Juan Carlos keeping the first place and Carlita keeping the second with Emerson on the third place. We're good. Now we're going to check question number seven. A function that allows companies which rely to remove or minimize the risk associated with vehicle investment. These companies help you to remove and optimize the risk associated with vehicle investment. We only have three answers right now. Fifteen seconds, we need more answers. Ooh. <laughs> Only one person got it correct. How is this even possible? Private fleet management. Okay, that's what they do. Exactly. Let's see the scoreboard right now. Okay, the only difference is that Jose Romero went to second place and Carlita went to third place. And we're going to go and check the last question. It provides a point system to score green building design and construction. One person answered right now. And 
and yes, that is the lead certification. <laughs> Very good, guys. Let's check that final podium. Who's gonna have the first place? The third one goes to Carlita. Very good. You fought and you kept it. Was it Romero in second place? Excellent. And first place tonight goes to Juan Carlos. <laughs> nice job, good guys. Perfect. Okay, so this is this was just to refresh your memory a little bit, okay? So now we're going to talk and we're going to go into the conversation question. And this one, the ones that we usually do to, to work randomly, to speak randomly. Okay. So tonight we're gonna be checking proverbs and saying. Okay. Proverbs and saying, como dichos y proverbios, el equivalente para nosotros, right? For example, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. Do you usually follow the advice that when in Rome, do as the Romans do? Honestly, yes, I do. I take it personally. I take it to my heart. <laughs> Whenever I visit someplace new, I always try to pay attention how the other people are acting around me, right? For example, last year when I went to Jacksonville in, in the middle of the restaurants, people were not using uh, sweaters. Okay, and in, in usually in the United States, because the hot the, the weather is very hot, when you go into a restaurant, the air conditioning is full potency. It's like crazy air conditioning. It's really cold inside of the restaurant. So I didn't like it. And I was taking a sweater. Every time I went to a restaurant, I was carrying a sweater. But I paid attention and I noticed that all the people in the restaurant they were using summer clothes, like going to the beach clothes. No one, no one was wearing a sweater, even though it was very cold inside the restaurant. So I follow this this proverb, this saying: "When in Rome, do what the Romans do." So I didn't wear a sweater inside the restaurant. So yeah, that's in that's in my personal case. Now I wanted to. You were gonna go with the breakout. You're gonna go into the breakout rooms, and you're going to so. Read them carefully. I, before you select which questions you are going to answer, I want you to pay attention and read them carefully because each question has a different proverb or a different um, saying. For example, you see this other, keep your friends close and your enemies closer. Do you think it's good advice? Or what do you think it means, right? By that, what do you think it means, right? Or for example, Fortune favors the bold, okay? Fortune favors the bold. Como la fortuna está con los que se arriesgan, okay? That would be like the equivalent in Spanish. La fortuna o la suerte está con los que se arriesgan. Fortune favors the bold. So some people say this. Can you think of examples of that being true? Do you consider yourself to be bold? Creo que usted es alguien que se arriesga, que toma riesgos, right? Or... Cada pregunta tiene un dicho o un proverbio diferente. So read them carefully, analyze what they are trying to say, and then answer with your experiences or examples or with your, what, whatever comes to your mind, okay? I'm going to give you guys 15 minutes for this one because these are compound sayings and verbs and proverbs. So every room has to, to answer at least three or four questions, okay? Every room has to answer three or four questions, two and two at least, minimum, right? Pueden ingresar a la sala, ya están abiertas, para que escojan qué preguntas van a contestar, pero analicen y traten de entender bien los dichos antes de contestar, right? Let's go, vamos a ingresar a la sala, van a tener 15 minutos. Let's go in, please.
Vamos ingresando a las salas, por favor. Están sus compañeros esperándolos. Ok, Juan Carlos, no hay problema. Para los demás que están acá en la sesión, los que, estén, los que tengan disponible, igual, traten de um, escoger dos o tres preguntas y se, contesten las, escriban sus respuestas, no tienen que conversar si no quieren entrar a las salas, pero escriban sus respuestas y participen cuando regresen los demás, van a participar individual, ok. Solamente los que me han informado que es por trabajo, en este caso Juan Carlos, pueden... O a omitir esa parte de los demás y tienen que prepararla.
Okay, so let's get ready to listen to your answers. There were some different proverbs and sayings here. So if you analyze them before answering, I'm sure your answers are going to be very interesting. <laughs> okay, we're going to start listening to Mayra. Mayra, do you have, which question did you select? Good evening. I select the question, um, has easy money, easy go? Ah, no, sorry. Has easy go, easy go. Money okay. comes and goes easily. I think this phrase is real in some case. I was thinking, for example, in this day, many people who have life for crimes like extortion or another. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Uh, we cannot hear you, Mayra. Se cortó, Mayra. No escucha, Mayra. Hola. Se cortó, no le escuchamos. Solo escuché que dijo, I think it's true because of the crime of extortion, y de ahí no le escuchamos. Uh -huh. Uh, sorry, my internet is not good. Okay. But I I say uh, in this day, many people um, who lie for crime, mm -hmm. they Oh, so yeah, we're getting internet problems from Mayra. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and listen to the others then. Thank you, Mayra. We're going to go with room number four. We have Jose Romero, Mauricio Velasquez, and Wendy Maricela. Go ahead, please. Okay. Jose Romero. Okay, I'm Okay, good. Miss, we were discussing one one proverb or saying one, each one. In my case, I select or I choose. Do you usually follow the advice that if it ain't broke, don't fix it? So in my opinion, don't try to improve a system that already works in old, right? However, we were discussing with my partner a lot of the topic and I found a comment on the network that said that that proverbs can be applying for the government or for the for the government from all over the world now i am not talking about a person in particular and it said that the problem with the government is that them are fixing things that aren't broke and oh. <laughs> yeah you got the idea uh -huh. yes and instead of fixing the things that are working, they don't do that. <laughs> yes, that's an opinion that we found in the network, and that's caught our attention. And we're discussing that that happened here in whatever other place mm -hmm. all over the world, right? Yeah. And that's my opinion. It happens we... in a lot in, in companies also, right? Like in big companies, they're always trying to change the processes. They're always trying to change the methodology. Even though there is no problem with the one that they have, they want to change it because it's more modern or because it's more it's more popular in other companies. And so they're trying to fix something that it's not broken, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was a good example. Good example. Thank you. Thanks. Wendy? Wendy, Wendy? Hello. I guess I... <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Uh, do you think it a true that could help us will help themselves? I worry attempted to the question, teacher. Okay. Um just personal personally, it's unnecessary in life because uh and money tied with draw difficult uh, circumstance, but there is always a solution. 
when we pray or when when we pray when we do our first or part we can evaluate ourselves why or attitude or we can make a change in our life and that could give us the solution and time and give give us use happiness in our here very good wendy okay. that was a very considered answer right you thought about all the parts of it very good wendy thank you uh, for me uh, i choose uh, do you agree with the saying hope for the best but prepare for the worst um for me yeah okay that is that in real that in real life happens that everything ha, had it difficult although you recite it the best but to achieve it the best many obstacles Mm -hmm. Going it would not be easy. Nothing is easy in life. Everything requires sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Only teaching. Very good. It's very appropriate, right? That answer, uh, Mauricio, very well explained, right? It's good to hope for the best, right? But you have to know it's not going to be easy. There is nothing easy in life. So you have to prepare. If the best doesn't happen, what are you going to do, right? <laughs> How are you going to adapt and survive? Very good. So thank you. Room number four, Wendy, Jose, Mauricio, very well explained. Each of, your, <laughs> each of the sayings, right? Let's go with room number five. We have Emerson and Carla. Go ahead. Hello. <laughs> Okay. Uh, I question. Emerson, he choose the. Um, the do you usually follow the advice that if uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it? Emerson. <laughs> In some cases, I think it's uh, the best way for the do the things is to the others. Do, do. Okay. You um do the, you do agree that many cups pull the soup. You can think of any example. Uh, yes, I agree. Uh, because I think it's more difficult to agree with many people. Uh, for example, if we want to start a new business, if there are many partners, it's very difficult to see a real position. Is there another one? Uh, which was one? <laughs> uh, but it was one each person. Era una cada uno. Yes. In my case, I choose the... You uh, chose the if we didn't broke, don't fix it, right? No. Uh, uh, Emerson. I asked for uh, Emerson. Okay. And which one did he ask you? Uh, I choose. Do you agree that too many cooks spoil the soup? Can you right. see of any examples? And I say uh, yes because it is more difficult to agree with many people. For example, if we want to start a new business, if there are many partners, 
it is very difficult to see a real Okay, now I can hear you. It's, it's, it's not breaking up. <laughs> very so, good. Mm -hmm. Sorry, it's rainy. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't worry, don't worry, it's normal. <laughs> Thank you for repeating, Carlita, very well. I like that you selected this one because it's not too common, right? It's not too common. So it was a little bit more difficult to explain and to give an example, and you selected it and you did it correctly. Also, Emerson, good job with your uh, with your answer, right? If it's if it broke, don't fix it, right? Those are just some of them, some of the sayings, right? And what about this one, guys? What do you think? There is no such thing as a free lunch. Do you think it's true? Creo que el equivalente en español sería como no existe nada gratis. No, nada de gratis en este video. No existe nada gratis. So there is no such thing as a free lunch. Do you agree or disagree? I personally, personally, I I disagree. I disagree. I believe there is such thing as a free lunch in life, but it's, for example, when you go out with your friends and they invite you, right? It's not like they ask, like they are expecting you to invite them back. If they are your friends, your real friends, right? They don't expect you to invite them back or it's not like they want something from you, right? They just invite you because they are your friends. So in that case, I think, yes, there is such a thing as a free lunch. What do you guys think? Do you think it's true or false? Do you agree or disagree that nothing is free in life? I don't know. <laughs> Have you ever been in a situation where somebody tells you they are going to give you something for free? But in reality, sometimes, even in products, right? In products, and when you're buying things in companies, they tell you, oh, if you buy this product, we will give you this one free. But you know, in reality, <laughs> it's not, there's nothing free, right, about that. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to go to the student manual. And we're gonna check the inventory part on page 36. Here we have how to use adverbs to qualify verbs. Okay. And we have the examples. This is what we were talking about yesterday, adverbs to qualify verbs. But I also showed you yesterday the adverbs to qualify adjectives, right? And in this case, we have a set a table here that says use adverbs to communicate where, when, why, how, how often, how much, or to what degree, then qualify, because they qualify the actions and the claims we make, right? So the adverbs, depending on how you use them or how which adverbs you use, they can give you this information or they can add extra information, this type of info, to certain sentences, right? And we have the example thing here. So it tells, before we read the example, we have the structure, right? The structure. Many adverbs are created by the putting together an adjective and adding the suffix li. Efficient is the adjective, the suffix li, efficiently. Accurate is the adjective, I add the suffix li, accurately. This is the adjective, this is the adverb. Consistent, adjective, consistently, adverb, right? So if it finishes with li or ly, you will know it's an adverb. Def different than the adjective, right? And we have some examples here. I'm gonna need two volunteers to read the examples, please. Each volunteer will read three and the other person the other three. Teacher, me teacher. Mauricio, help me with the first three, please. And Mayra, help me with the other three, please. Oh, no, Maida, you're having problems with the internet. Don't worry. Um, Wendy, can you help me with this three, please? Wendy? <laughs> Wendy? Wendy? <laughs> Wendy? Wendy? Hi, Wendy, we're talking to you. Estamos llamando, Wendy. 
<risa> Hello, no sorry. No worries, si nos ayuda a leer los últimos tres ejemplos después de Mauricio. Está bien, teacher, está bien. Thank you. Okay. Lo siento. No worries, go ahead, Mauricio. Ahí está, ok. Organize your inventory efficiently. Record information accurately. Check for possible improvement consistently. Revise process. Revise. When Re revise processes slowly. Mm -hmm. Communicate wide to distributor regularly. Mm -hmm. Change your inventory practice incre incrementally. Mm -hmm. okay. Incrementally. Correct. So remember, you add the lee to the adjective, and it's no longer an adjective, it becomes Upper. In this case, in this scenario, these adverbs are qualifying the verb. In this scenario, estos adverbios califican al verbo. For example, organize your inventory. Organize is the verb. Efficiently is the adverb that is qualifying the verb. Okay, organiza su, organiza su inventory. Eficientemente. Eficientemente nos dice cómo se organiza. Entonces está juzgando o calificando al verbo. Right? So, same thing. Record information. Record is the verb. Accurately is the adverb that is qualifying the verb. Record. Right? Check for possible improvement. Check is my verb. And the adverb consistently is describing the verb. Right? So when you want to mention how something is happening, you can use adverbs to qualify, right? So moving forward, I'm going to share some tips that we have in here. Just bear with me for a moment. These are tips for effective inventory management that we're going to read. Okay, so we're going to do a little bit of reading. Um, let me share the screen. Okay, how can forecasting help you reduce inventory errors and costs, right? So we have one and then two forecasting. How does forecasting is three? How does forecasting four and how to implement five? Six. Okay, so we need five people to read. Okay, what is forecasting? I need a volunteer to read this part first. What Let is? Go ahead, Marisa, please. Okay, what is forecasting? What is forecasting? Forecasting is the process of predicting future demand for your product or survive. Service. Services. Okay. Services based on the historical data, market trend, customer behavior, and other factors. For forecasting can help you plan your inventory label, production schedule, purchasing order, and distribution strategy. But forecasting Accurately, 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 you can avoid overstocking or understocking, which can lead to inventory error. What? What? The? Waste. 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 Obsolescence of stock up. Or stock out. Or stock up. Mm -hmm. Okay. So pay attention to the tips that they are giving you here, guys, okay? About forecasting, because you will need these tips in the activity that you're going to do in a few moments, okay? Let's read, I need a volunteer to read this part. How does forecasting reduce inventory error? Jose, could you help us with this part, please? Yes, miss. 
How does per permita? Mm -hmm. oh, did that. Okay. How does forecasting reduce inventory errors? Inventory errors can arise when the actual inventory doesn't match the recorded the recorded inventory, which can be caused by <laughs> theft, damage, miscounting, mislabeling, or data or data, data and data entry mistakes. These errors can lead to inaccurate fin financial reports, lost sales, customer dissatisf dissatisfaction, or compliance issues. Forecasting can help mit mitigate inventory errors by improving visibility across the supply chain and tracking inventory levels, movement, and location. This allows for identifying and correcting discrepancies as well as optimizing inventory allocation and replacement. Additionally, forecasting can help reduce holding costs by balancing inventory between meeting demand and avoid excess inventory that incurs storage, insurance, tax, or depreciation costs. Moreover, Forecasting can enhance inventory quality by managing the ratio of sales to inventory. A high ratio indicates fresh and relevant inventory, while a low ratio indicates a stale and outdated stock. Forecasting also helps adjust inventory accord according to demand patterns seen so nearly and or product life or product life cycles. So that errors due to spoilage, inspiration for or obsolescence are prevented. Right. There, are, there are a few words that call my attention, Miss. Mm -hmm. That's what we're gonna check right now. Um, I was gonna tell you guys, forecast. Empezamos con esta. Forecast es pronóstico. Okay. Yeah. De hecho, se, se fijan eh, with the weather forecast, el pronóstico del tiempo, right? So let's see the one that you caused wanna by see. the the third line in the end, which can be caused by oh theft, robo. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh -huh. Theft, robo. Mm -hmm. Like the like the video game theft, theft auto. <laughs> yeah, theft, okay. robo. Okay. Then we have miscount damage, daño, right? Um, miscounting mm -hmm. con errores al contar. Cuando estamos contando el inventario, errores en eso es miscounting, right? Mislabeling, equivocaciones al ponerle las etiquetas, right? Mm -hmm. Like that. Inaccurate, inexacto. Inaccurate, inexacto, right? And then let's see. Oh, the word arise. Arise, surgir, okay? En los errores de inventario pueden surgir. Arise, surgir. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then... Replenishment, allocation and replenishment. Replenishment es cuando se refresca un producto, okay? Si se agotó, I replenish, lo repongo, right? Basically, rep reponer, okay? And then... Incurs, incurre. Okay, incurs, incurre, incurrir. Okay. Enhance, mejorar. Mejorar algo, mejorar alguien, right? Enhance. And then, let's see, we have others, vocabulary here. Outdated, desactualizado. Outdated. Si se fijan, no es updated, es outdated. Eso sería lo opuesto, desactualizar, outdated, right? And then, spoilage, um, cuando se pudre, cuando se vence algo, se echa a perder, eso es spoilage, right? Okay. All right, very good. So, that's like the third part, right? How does forecast? Yeah. Yes, Wendy? More, more, more over. Yes, more over, es como more, decir, more over. Uh -huh. more over, lo que es más. Thank you, teacher. Mm -hmm. All right. And then, 
I was gonna move. So okay, so those are like the benefits, right? How it can help you if you have a system that manage inventory, organization and manage inventory, you can prevent all those things from happening, right? So now we're gonna check how that work as you can reduce your cost for inventory, right? Reduce the inventory cost. We need another volunteer to read. Uh, Amazon, please. How does forecasting to reduce inventory cost? Inventory costs are the expenses associated with acquiring, storing, and distribution your inventory and can be divided into three categories. Ordering cost, folding cost, and sources cost. Forecasting can help reduce the cost by minimizing your ordering express expenses, allowing your holding scopes and avoiding any sources scopes, specifically for the for forecasting can optimize your order with quality and frequency, as well as negative better terms and discount with the suppliers. Additionally, it can reduce inventory level and optimize inventory space while implementing, implementing inventory control techniques as a faithful or layful. Lastly, forecasting can anticipate and prevent, prevent stock out, improve the cost, improving customer service and loyalty. All right. So this is about how the forecasting can reduce inventory costs, right? Imagine that you don't know that you have enough stock, enough inventory, and you keep buying, and you keep buying, but you already have it sufficient. You already have enough to cover your, your sales. So that could cost you a lot of money that you would be extra spending, right? But also you can optimize, as Emerson was mentioning, right? You can optimize your order quantities and frequency, and you can negotiate better terms and discounts, right? If you keep a forecast on, you can, it can, and next you're preparing to buy the next inventory for the next season or the next year, so for example. You can ask, if you have a forecast, you can ask for better prices, right? Because you will tell them how much you're going to be selling. And depending on that, you can ask for even promotions or things like that, right? And then also forecasting can help you prevent stockouts, meaning get to be without inventory right and now we're going to go to the important part how to implement forecasting in your inventory management pay attention to this part because you're going to use it you're going to use this tip when you start doing the activity okay so um i need one volunteer to read carlita can you help us please yes uh, how to implement Forecasting in your inventory management system. And forecasting is an ongoing process that involves plus monitoring, evolution, and adjustment. To begin forecasting in your inventory management system, uh, you must follow and analyze your history data, data such as sales, inventory, and demand, as well as as external factors like market trend, customer preference, or competitors' actions. Choose a forecasting technique that fits your business objective, that availability, and occurrence level. Qualitative. 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 I'm sorry, yeah. <laughs> Here. Qualitative, qualitative techniques. Uh, quali qualitative techniques are based on expert opinion and adjustments, while quantitative techniques use mathematical models or formulas. Examples of quantitative techniques are moving average, exponential smoothing. Trend projection or regression analysis. 
monitor and update your forecast by comparing them to actual results and measuring forecast. Occurrence and error, accuracy and error using metrics such as mean absolute deviation. 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 And in AD, mm -hmm. <laughs> mean absolute percentage error, MAPE, or tracking signal. They don't forecast regularly and also then according to any change in demand, supply, or the environment. All right, thank you. So, yeah, right. Some of the tips that Carlita was mentioning here, for example, to begin your forecast inventory, you must collect and anal analyze your historical data, such as sales, right? How much sales you had in the past, uh, how much inventory you had in the past, what was your demand in the past, right? And what were the external trends? For example, last year in December, we sold this amount of money and this was the inventory. And what was the, what was the external factor? It was December, it was the holidays, right? End of the year and Christmas holiday. So they were market trends and factors, external factors that were affecting your sales in that moment, right? Second, you have to choose a forecasting technique. There are different ones that you could use. So you wanna use one that fits your business and your objective, right? And then look for examples, right? It's as if they actually work. And then you gotta, update your forecast regularly. You start bringing the information from the past, you compare it to the one here in the present, to the current, so you can forecast for the future, right? And that's how it actually works. So take this part in mind, thank you to the ones that read, and we're gonna go to the student's manual, okay? And I'm gonna share this thing with you. So we have exercise number five here. Label the descriptions with the names of the steps to organize an inventory management system. So we have the first step, organize product and vendor information, create and submit accurate purchase order numbers, purchase orders. Receive inventory with speed and accuracy. Accuracy, exactitude. Yes, it's a pronunciation, accuracy. Okay, la i suena, no es accurate, it's accuracy, okay? Tag and label inventory. Record yourself. Okay. So those are the those are the steps, right? Y ahora vamos a leer las descriptions y les vamos a hacer match. Okay. So I need five volunteers. Cada uno va a leer los steps y los va a hacer match con la descripción. Raise your hand, please, so I can see. We need five volunteers. Mauricio, can you help us with number one, please? Then, uh, yeah, with number one, thank you. Um, Emerson, help us with number two, please, if possible. Okay, Jose with number three, Carla with number four, please. And I don't know if we have another person for number five. Let's see. Oh, Wendy, help us with number five, please. Okay, go ahead. Maurice. Uh, you want to record what product was sold, what the product is the price, is this come, um, what price was actually paid for the product. Mm -hmm. And I think. Um, Then you uh, record yourself. Okay, I think. I think so too. I think so too. Record yourself, right? You wanna record what products you sold, the products listed price and the discount, if there were discounts, right? And what was the actual pay, price that you paid? So I think, yes, that's the same, okay. record yourself. Let's read number two. 
get all your products and vendor information organized and in one place. Product information, description, and shipping info, including as well the business name and the business contact info. I believe it is the organized product and vendor information. Exactly. It sounds sounds like that is the right one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's go with number three. Do this to your inventory, and it will ensure customer and cashier are not confused about the price about a product price. Tag and level inventory. Okay. Let's see. Do this to your inventory and it will ensure customers and cashiers are not confused about product's price. Yeah, tag and label, yeah. right? If there is a tag, you can you don't get confused. <laughs> if there is a label, yes. you don't get lost, right? Right here. Number four, please. If there is difference between the order to, to submit and the actual inventory delivered, draft a copy of your purchase order to check in cataloging or a new inventory before it is put away in the stock room. Uh, I think it creates me the course purchase order. Create and submit accurate purchase orders. Let's see. If there is a difference between your order and your submitted, grab a copy of your purchase order. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> that matches that little, correct. And number five, Wendy. Incorporate a purchase order system to make purchase accurate and avoid confusion on um, and level inventory tissue. Mm, it says incorporate purchase order system to make purchases accurate uh -huh. and avoid confusion. La, la única que nos sobra is receive inventory with speed and accuracy. But if we receive the inventory, how does that? Oh, well, yeah. If you incorporate yeah. a purchase order, you can receive this. You can make it faster because you are comparing with the purchase order. Yeah, that okay. matches the one. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you, everyone. Okay, so now you're going to go into the breakout rooms and you're going to work in prayers and you're going to use the steps that you have above to decide to design a basic plan to organize an effective inventory management in your company, okay? So, of course, you're going to specify what type of company it is, right? For example, means we created this company that works like this and this, right? And this company is said that we sell, we sell shoes, we sell Christmas decorations, we sell makeup. It can be anything that you sell, right? First, you're going to introduce your company. You're going to let us know what is the business, what do you do in a company, what do they sell, what to what you do you dedicate selling, right? And then you're going to explain what plan you created to organize an effective inventory management system in your company, okay? What is the plan that you have designed to organize the inventory management, all right? So I'm gonna give you guys 15 minutes to discuss this. If you need more time at the end, that's perfect. I can give it no problem. I can give it to you. But yeah, initially you're gonna start with 15 minutes. You can use the steps that we have in here. Las salas están abiertas, van a tener 15 minutos para crear. Tienen que, la conversación tienen que incluir de qué es su empresa, mencionarla, y, eh, presentar su empresa y luego presentar el plan que han creado para organizar el manejo de inventario. Right? You're going to have 15 minutes for this. Let's go into the room. Pueden ingresar a la sala, por favor, y están abiertas. Vamos ingresando, por favor, a la sala. Emerson, ahí lo está esperando Mauricio. Thank you.
Hello. Hello. Carlita. The electricity. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, who are you working with? With Wendy. Um, let me see where she is. Okay. Oh, okay, room number five. Bear with me. There you go.
All right, let's begin listening to those conversations and to see the basic plan that you define for your companies to organize inventory. All right, we're going to start with room number two. We have Emerson and Mauricio. Go ahead, guys, please. Okay, Miss. Um, our company is dedicated to the dairy products, and we choose the do the the system inventory manage when the, you need uh, for do the control uh, the product. And the first step we establish is the. Um, Organized product inventory information for have a, a, a record of the purchases and have a copy of the document for respond the sales. Okay. Now, did you? I have uh, uh, any step, uh, but uh, organized an uh, inventory management system. In the first one, uh, uh, give general information on dairy products. Uh, Emerson, in the second one? The second one, uh, we established an uh, organization product. Okay. The third one, create order system to make it pusher correctly and avoid error. Number four, Emerson. The number four, tag 11 inventory. Uh, for revise the order actually, uh, we have a record of the order delivered for the for revise a uh, stop me. Yeah. That's all. Okay. All right. And number five, uh, make a record of the product being sold. What are the price, the product list, and discount if you have them? Only this. Very good. I like that you took the step and you modified and you adapted them to your company's necessities, right? To the dairy company. So very good, Mauricio and Emerson, thank you. Okay, we're gonna go with room number three. We have Eduardo and Jose. Go ahead. This, we, we don't create, to be honest with you. We were discussing the five step that you have on the, on the screen. Okay. Uh, yes, but we were, talking a lot about the five step and we get a few confusion between the number four and number five but all right yeah eduardo do you want to share anything oh yes in, in my case uh, i think the same on my with my, about my, my jose romero because i was confusing in the number five and the number four, but you were confused like how? Because I don't know what is the, the right answer, maybe. Okay, so let's check. If there is a difference between the order you submitted, can you read it, please? Eduardo, number four. <clears throat> if, there, if there is a difference between the order you submit, and the actual inventory delivered, grab a copy of your purchase order to check and catalog all new inventory before it is put away in their stock, stock room. Mm -hmm. In this so, case, mm -hmm. uh, we, uh, we select the receipt inventory with a speed and accuracy. Accuracy. Mm -hmm. Accuracy. Accuracy. Okay. Okay. That makes sense also, right? It also makes sense. It can that one can be four or it can be five, right? Um the difference 
I think for number five is this one. Create and submit accurate purchase orders, right? Create and submit yes. accurate purchase orders. Here is the thing. I think this one, create and submit accurate. This this is like a keyword, right? Accurate. This number four is telling you if there is a difference or a discrepancy, for example, between the order that you submitted and the actual inventory that you received, you are going to need an accurate purchase order to check and catalog the new inventory before it's put away in the order, right? If it's not accurate, probably you're going to continue having the problem. So that's why we think number four is this one. And mm -hmm. then number five, we think it's to incorporate the purchase order system when you're making the purchases accurate and avoid confusion, that's going to make it faster, right? That's going to help with the speed and also the, accur the accuracy, right? So that's why that's why we said number four is create and submit, and then receive with speed is number five. Just to clarify, guys, for you, okay? In that case, my 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 partner was was right because uh, he said that. The same that you said. <laughs> All right, and you yeah, didn't believe Jose. <laughs> yeah, but Eduardo was trying to get in confusion, and so we 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 start a conversation about number four and number five, mm -hmm. and, and we don't have enough time for creative plans. To be honest with you. <laughs> All right, that's fine. As long as you were practicing in English, you were good. So, um, as a as a suggestion, right, for future future scenarios where you don't understand uh something. Always try to look for key key elements that can give you a clue of what you're of what you're looking. In this case, the word accurate is helping you identify that it has to be. If there is a discrepancy, you need a document that is accurate, right? And then here, why would I incorporate a new process? Oh, probably for speed and also for accuracy, right? So always try to look for keywords that can help you get a guide of what you're looking for. This part is also important if you're planning to take uh, English exams in the future, like for, uh, what do they call them? I forget the name. Like if you want to study in a university in another country or for any test, or if you're applying for a job and you're having an English test, you will find this type of a scenario where it's information seems very similar. So always try to look for keywords that make the difference and you will find your answers. Right. So thank you for sharing them. <laughs> um okay. Eduardo and Jose. And now we're gonna listen to the conversation from room number five. And here we have Carla Sofia and Wendy Marisol. Uh, we don't have a conversation but uh, I uh, do a list uh -huh. for the inventory in a supermarket. Okay. But uh, can uh, you share a screen? <laughs> yeah, let me just stop sharing here. And I'm going to let you share in a moment. Try now. See if it lets you. Okay. okay. Uh, I say the three, uh, four, five, and six say uh, when. Yeah. I, well, no, supermarket inven inventories. Uh, first, we verify stock in the warehouse. Uh, step Number two, we check the order in the warehouse to see if the product order two days ago had a read. And step number three, if the incoming product is taken to the sales room and then places in the gondola or okay. 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 Number, <laughs> number four, uh, we rotate dice for do they review? Uh, we recheck the stock levels of premium products. Why are the best seller? 
I fin I finally audited its performance. Okay, so those are your those are your uh, steps for how you will manage the inventory in a supermarket, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's yes, it's very right. good right it it looks you don't go just inventing it you first go at the first step take what you have in the warehouse right right and from there you created your plan so very good job thank you thank you Carlita and Wendy very good job all right guys so now we have a few minutes before the end of the class so I'm gonna share the screen with you again and we're gonna go into the student and do the final exam, okay? We're gonna be checking the final exam. So, para los que no lo han tomado el examen final o los que lo tomaron y salieron muy bajo, pueden retomarlo y ahora levantar su nota, right? I'm just gonna go ahead and show you guys this, um, the answer in this case, okay? So on section number one, section number one, part one from the final exam. Parte uno del examen final. Le pueden ir tomando captura, le toman foto, o anoten las respuestas como les salga mejor. Okay? La idea es aquí, ustedes ya no se vayan mañana sin haber hecho eso. Y que tengan el porcentaje. Okay? So number one, software system used to keep record of inventory level. Inventory tracking. La 1 es la letra B, básicamente. Inventory tracking. Replenish a store es lo mismo que restock. Okay. And then we're going with number 3 and 4. Distribution center. Number 3 es la pelea de red. It serves larger re region. Okay, esta es la que vamos a seleccionar. Number four, cross docking center. Y la primera también. It can be named a terminal or authority. And then number five, warehouse. It's the second option, la segunda opción. A large building where raw materials or manufactured goods may be stored. Right? So there you have the ones from the part one. Tienen la parte uno del examen final. Okay. Luego vamos entonces con la parte 2. Vuelvo y repito, tomen nota, tomen foto, tomen captura, hagan lo que necesiten. Para los que no han terminado esto, el examen final o los que no lo han hecho, pues acá ya está, ahí para ustedes. Number one, certain, certain y tres, I'm certain too. Number two, third, uh, likely are likely to, they are likely to email rather than phone, okay? Number three, sure. I am sure that she'll try her best to be there. Number three, I'm sure. Number four, ten. There is a chance that they'll, that we'll have problems, okay? And then number five, doubt, do that, doubt. I doubt he will be back by Friday. Okay. Vamos a ustedes completan la sección 2. Okay. Vamos a la sección 3, a la parte 3 del examen. Okay. I'm going to show you guys here so you can help yourself. Okay. Number one, manufacturer. Okay. Manufacturer. Con mayúscula o con minúscula manufacturer. Right. Supply, supplier, con mayúscula o supplier con minúscula. Puede ser una o la otra. No vayan a poner las dos porque no se les va a tomar. Distribute. Distributor or distributor con minúscula. Wholesale, wholesaler. Right? Sale, seller or seller. Okay? Son las opciones que ustedes tienen para que lo puedan ir bien. Si lo pueden ir haciendo de una vez, es mucho que mejor. Y mañana solo vienen a practicar full. Okay. And the last part, which is part number four we have here, is also option multiple. So I'm going to show you guys. It. Okay. Part number four, la última parte del examen. Number one, a software system, inventory tracking. 
Number two, replenish, restock. Number three, the time and place, point of sale, POS. Number four, items with expiration date, foliage, foliage. And number five, the oldest inventory item, first in, first out. Okay. Con eso entonces concluyen ustedes el examen final. Y esta parte lo voy a decir en español para que nadie diga que no lo entendimos. <ríe> eh, Súper importante que ya esté finalizada la plataforma para el día de mañana. Ok, si ustedes no han completado la plataforma, dos cosas pasan. Uno, no pueden pasar al siguiente módulo, no pueden completar ese, no pueden, si no está completado, no pasan al siguiente módulo. Y dos, me genera trabajo extra a mí como su profesora, andarlo persiguiendo después y andar protejando con administración, tal persona no terminó la plataforma. Ok, así que ahorrémonos todos el desgaste <ríe> y ustedes que les estén llamar y llamar. Si tienen notas bajas en alguna de las tareas, retómenla y que por lo menos les queden 90, 95. No se vayan con 40 o 70, ¿sí? Eh, porque es promedio que les cuenta al final, ¿ok? Right? Mañana es la clase final, es pura práctica, conversación, las dos horas van a estar practicando, así que get ready, vamos a ver todos los, vamos a practicar, no a ver, a practicar los temas desde el inicio del módulo hasta ahorita para que ustedes puedan irse con eso. Y de paso decirles, Hablen con sus empresas, la, el departamento de su de empresa que maneja el papeleo con esta forma, que vaya preparando ya los papeles o enviando el formulario para el siguiente módulo. Ustedes cre, creerían que van para avanzado, si no me equivoco, así que ya con todo, right Están a casi nada. <ríe> y la mayoría de ustedes habla bastante bien, así que seguir practicando. Ahorita es practicar, 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 ¿ok? So, that's going to be it for tonight. Le voy a pasar asistencia. Please stay here or present when you listen to your name. Okay. And we have Carlos Vladimir Rodriguez. Dairo Jonathan Fuentes. Eduardo Antonio Magaña. Emerson Ulises. Here, here. Eduardo, here. Thank you. Emerson Ulises. Present, Miss. Thank you, Fatima Gabriela. Present, Miss. Thank you, Jonathan Jose. Present. Thank you, Jorge Antonio Sánchez. Jose Bernardo López. Present. Thank you, Jose Carlos Argueta. Present. Thank you, Jose César Lemos. Juan Carlos Herrera Delgado. Present, Miss. Thank you, Juan José Herrera Albarenga. Present. Thank you, Carla Sofía Argueta. Present. Thank you, Kenia Elizabeth Rodríguez. Mauricio Antonio Velázquez. Present, teacher. Thank you, Mayra Cecilia Peña. Nelly Lili Beth Andrade. Present. Thank you, Sandra Abigail Bonilla. And Wendy Maricela Ramirez. Present teacher. Thank you. Okay, that's going to be it for tonight. Recordarles, si recibieron un link de la encuesta, no la tomen todavía. Esa la vamos a hacer mañana en la clase. Tiene que ser el último día. Y es acá en la clase. Okay? We'll see you all tomorrow. I hope you have a great day. And I will see you at night. Have a good night, everyone. Good night, Miss. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Uh, teacher, I have yes, a question. Dígame. In the distribute, in the part three, uh, ¿cómo era distribute? Um, también tengo que ver. En la parte tres, primero dis distribute, ya le digo. Distributor, distributor, eh, se lo voy a mostrar. Um, I said distribute, distribute. Ah, I que le ponía e -er. <laughs> Okay, thank you. All right. And... All right. Solo es Yes. Huh? Okay. Good night, Carlita. Yes. See you Good tomorrow. Night.
Of course, any pregunta? Can you Dígame. check? Can you check if I have to? Uh, I have done my my homework or no? Okay. Because apparently I was checking, and I finally I had done everything. All right. <laughs> apparently, or you don't remember doing everything. <laughs> yes, but I was doing. Uh, yes, you know. have it completed, but you have yeah. So yeah. Complete the top. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you for checking. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Have a good night. See you tomorrow.